Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience, in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. This is Minister Caroline Gothier coming to you live from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Esperia, California, in the United States. Today, we'd like to talk a little bit about a topic that the word is thrown around a lot, the word love, but we're going to talk about love from God's point of view, from the Word of God's point of view. The Bible teaches us that Jesus had 12 disciples or apostles. He taught and he trained them to work in his ministry. All a disciple means is someone that you take and you train and they're loyal followers of what it is you've taught them. So he had 12, but there was one that seemed to be a great distinction. He, he, he stood out among the others. The one apostle of distinction was the apostle John. What made him so distinctive or different from the others? Well, he was the youngest of the group. That was one thing. He was referred to in scripture as the apostle of love. Oh, if we had apostles of love today, John was known as the apostle of love. John even described himself. You hear him talking when you read in scripture. He describes himself as the one whom Jesus loved. Well, Jesus loved all of us, but he's talking about how he saw himself in his relationship with the Lord. If you weren't seeing this through spiritual eyes, you might even think that he was proud or arrogant to, to say such a thing. But you can talk like that when you know with certainty that Jesus loves you. When you study in the book of John, John's gospel, you'll find very deep revelation, deep into God's love for us. A lot of us don't think of God's depth of love for us, but he loved us to the degree that he sent his only son to die on the cross for us so that we didn't have to spend eternity separated from him. That's love. Now, the Apostle John teaches us more about the love of God than any of the others. Uh, four times the Apostle John or the disciple John referred to himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. Well, that could sound like Jesus didn't love the others, but that's not true. This is John's revelation of God's love for him. This is John's personal revelation, and you have to have a personal revelation of God's love for you. How could he write or say such things? Because he had a deep revelation of Jesus' love for him, for all, and he was secure in that love. He was secure in it. And he was, he was free. He wasn't like a lot of people are today. We're inhibited. We won't come right out and say, well, God loves me or Jesus loves me. Yes, he does. Scripture tells us he does. But John had this boldness. This is one of the reasons he stood out from the others. John had this boldness. We call this kind of love when we study in the Greek, agape. It's not the kind of love that we call love uh, in the natural. When we say love, we, we mean things like, you know, a warm, fuzzy feeling or someone you want to be with, around all the time and you want to get married. And you, you, we, call all, so we call sex love. This is not what agape means. Agape is the God kind of love. 
there is a special love, a kind that God has. It's a God kind of love. It's not man's love where it's conditional. If you treat me right, I'll love you. If you do this for me, I'll love you. If you stop, then my love stops. That's not God's love. That's not agape. The God kind of love is the highest kind of love. Young lovers think their love is the greatest kind, but that's not so. Agape, the God kind of love, that's the best. That's the epitome of love. How come? How can I say that? Because included in the, in the God kind of love is mercy. Included in it is forgiveness. Included in it is grace and kindness, just goodness. It's, it, it, it's kind of described in Psalm 23 when it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. That's the God kind of love. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. This kind of love has no conditions or strings attached to it. It doesn't look for what it can get from you, but what it can give to you in that relationship. God's love for us is unconditional. And when we get the revelation of that, our whole lives will change. We don't have to earn it, and we don't qualify for it. The reason I say we don't qualify for it is because we were sinners. And if Jesus hadn't come and died for us, we never would have made it. We, would, we, we have his love, but we would have spent eternity separated from him. So we simply receive Jesus as our Savior and Lord, and then this God kind of love belongs to us. We get to experience it. He loved us before, but we weren't aware of it. We, we were dead to him. But when we received him as our Savior and Lord, now everything comes alive. Nothing can separate us or take away from us God's love for us. See, people aren't like that. People will have a condition, and they'll withdraw their love. They'll love you for a time. Sometimes we hear of couples. They've been married for 25, 30 years, and all of a sudden, the, they, the husband doesn't love her anymore, and he wants somebody else. He withdraws that love. This is not how God's love is. His love is never withdrawn from us. Romans 8, 38 and 39 for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor sorrows, nor anything, no powers, no nothing, nothing can separate it, nor height, nothing of any death, nor anything created, nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. That means there's no conditions to this. That means he loves you whether you ever love him back or not. Hallelujah. What kind of love is this? And this is what John was talking about. John was saying, this is the kind of love that God has for him. God loves me. Jesus loves me. And as I said earlier, it could sound like he's arrogant, but not when you see it in scripture, not when you understand, not when you get the revelation of his love for us. Hallelujah. It says nothing can separate us from his unconditional love. Now, when you think of John 3.16, and a lot of people don't think about this, but it gives you the definition of love, John 3.16. You see, in the light of what we've been talking about today, for God so loved the world, that word loved, that's agape. For God so agape or loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him could have everlasting life. So that, that means that anyone that has a desire and, and, and receives what is, is said in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ, he's the Son of God, that he died for your sins, then, then, then this, this everlasting life belongs to you. You become one of those whosoever wills. Hallelujah. Whosoever will, 
whosoever will, that's anyone that has the desire to be the son or daughter of God. Hallelujah. And, and then you'd be able to say, just like John said, you know, I'm the one that Jesus loves. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love other people, but this is so personal to you. It's like it. his love only belongs to you. That's how it comes across to you. Now, we know that he loves us all, but when you see it and you get this revelation, it becomes so personal to you, like, like I'm his only daughter. Oh, I'm his favorite daughter. Yeah, he'll do, my father will do anything for me. My father forgives me when I sin. My father encourages me. My father lifts me up when I'm feeling down. My father, this is, this is the special relationship. And you will start feeling that relationship when you understand and get the revelation of the love of God for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you love me now, he says in another passage, because this is not just a one-way thing. This is a two-way thing. This is, first of all, in John 3, 16, you had to accept him. Okay, now you'll experience his love. Now he's saying, if you love me, now you're going to obey me. You're, obey me? Obey my words. Now what that means is, if you say you love me, now you will, when you find it in my word, that I want you to not forsake the assembling of yourselves together with other believers, then, then, then that means I want you to be in church. That means I want you to be in Bible study where the word of God is being taught. That means that you're going to change in terms of how you treat people. That means you'll begin to change of how you talk, the things that you say. You'll begin to line your words up with the word of God concerning you. You won't be saying slang things and Think words that uh, that that speak of death. You'll you'll begin to say words that speak of life. You'll begin to speak uplifting words. Hallelujah! You will begin to change when that love of God that's shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, according to Romans five five. Now. These scriptures now, they'll have a deeper meaning. Now when you see, you hear someone say they love God, now you're expecting more from them. It's, this is not just something where you're falling out at the altar and crying and, 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 and uh, have being very emotional. There's nothing wrong with being emotional. There's nothing wrong with crying, but that's not his definition of love. Hallelujah. John 3, 16 is his definition of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. So that means when we love God, we become givers. When we know that God loves us, we want to obey his word and we'll become givers. We'll become kind. We'll become forgiving. We, we become uh, all kinds of wonderful things. Our personality begins to change. It necessarily won't change overnight, but the change will begin. So when you read in Romans 5, 5, the scripture says that the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. Now, now you know he only loves you this way. This is how you feel. Now, it's not that he doesn't love others, but I'm saying this is the revelation that you have. So now that love is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. He's put that great love in your heart. And wherever you go, now that you say you agape him, or now that you say that you love him, wherever you go, because of this Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God being shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Now, wherever you set foot, wherever you go, you're going to take the love of God with you. That means if you go into a room where there's bickering and fighting, the love of God will exude from you. The peace of God will exude from you. Hallelujah. This is what it means when John says, I'm his favorite. He loves me. I'm the one that he loves. Now you can say, I'm the one that he loves. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart 
that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.